What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video, I'm going to be going over on how to install, update, or reinstall and update your NVIDIA drivers for gaming in particular. Well, that's what I basically need to install my drivers for, is for gaming. So I'll show you how to do it. It's fast, it's easy. More importantly though, I'm gonna show you a method that I recently found out that I utilize to install the drivers from scratch and cleanly, which I advise you do because every time there's a new update and you reinstall the drivers and you overlap the pre-existing ones, it can cause issues over time. So this method is a lot better and yeah, they're just basically clean installs. And also there is something called the bloating. Can't really explain exactly what that is, but to put it in layman terms, it's basically you just, it allows you to remove some elements of the driver's EXE where you can pick and choose which components to install. Because uh, if you just install the regular drivers, it has a whole bunch of crap inside of the programs or the drivers that you may or may not need. And in my case, one of the things I'd like to remove is the telemetry. If you want a more in-depth description and a more intelligent description of what these components does, I suggest you search out a content creator by the name of Pangino. This is where I got all the information from and I've been following his tutorials for years, especially when it comes to gaming and graphics optimization. So without further ado, let me just get right into it and straight to the point. And uh, yeah, I will provide a link to his page and yeah, check out his channel and his videos. He, he knows what he's talking about and he can explain things a lot better than I can ever hope to <laughs> explain. So, all right, here it goes. First thing, what you want to install is something called display driver uninstaller. And what this allows you to do is you uninstall your old display driver and you have to restart your computer, unfortunately though, and boot into a uh, safe mode to do. And I'll show you step-by-step -step on how I do things and it's easy. And if you do it after a couple times, it actually becomes like second nature. And uh, yeah, you become an expert. You will become an expert at doing this. this guy, uh, I don't know what I said. Uh, I don't remember. Bro. Oh, here goes. Uh, I usually download the portable self-extracting one. And I will uninstall or not uninstall, I will run the EXC in a bit. I'm just gonna download all the rest of the necessary components that I need for this. Next program is something called NV Clean Stall. And the basic premise for this program, it does the same thing, but this is what allows you to select what you want or need in the driver's EXC in terms of uh, the, some of the components. Finally, the most important part is you wanna find what your uh, GPU is and download the drivers for your GPU. So I don't know if you're using a notebook or a laptop, go for that and select your correct GPU. For me, I am running a 40 series card on my PC and I have an RTX 4090. I'm, what, I'm running Windows 10 still. I don't wanna upgrade to 11 quite yet. I'll do it when I absolutely, it's absolutely necessary. But for now, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. For me, Windows 10 runs perfectly just fine. So I just stick to that. You can, depends if you're gaming or you're a content creator, uh, I'm both, but uh, I hear there's no major, major difference. Maybe one is more optimized for gaming, but since I run programs like DaVinci Resolve, um, this time I'm gonna choose the studio driver. There shouldn't be that much of a difference. I've run this before and it worked out just fine. Okay, and that is it. I will go into my download section and I make sure I have all three necessary EXEs that I need. Okay, with that done, I have the, the driver itself, which I will do in a minute. I have the display driver uninstaller and the NV clean stall. So what you're gonna do is I usually run this first. I run it as admin. Run as admin and I just select the EXE, which is the driver itself. You gotta look for this. So I just use the files. It says use your files on disk and I just select it just in case. And since I already know what the location it is on my desktop and I will just search down to right here. Oops, here we go. 
open that up, click next. And all right, here it is. You have choices now. You can choose all if you want every single component, which I don't suggest you do. For me, I mean, it depends if you use GeForce Experience. I personally don't like GeForce Experience. Uh, it cuts down on some of my PC's resources, and I want as much performance as possible when I'm gaming. So I deselect that. But what you can do is you go for the recommended, which deselects everything. And the recommended version is this. The display driver, which is required, the physics, which you'll need for gaming, and the HD audio. It depends if you're using HD audio or not through the HDMI. I don't. I use two different headsets or headphones. One of them is my Logitech over-the-ear headphones, and I use the Logitech, Logitech G Fits, which is their wireless earbuds. Uh, I don't really need that, but I, you know what? I just... I just keep it selected anyways. Um, also, I have a USB-C driver that I use with my Oculus Quest 2, the Meta Quest 2, which I pre-ordered the Quest 3, by the way. It should be coming in five to seven days. So when that arrives, I shall, I'll probably do an unboxing and I'll make a video of that. So if you want, stick around. If you're a VR enthusiast and uh, yeah, make sure you subscribe to my channel and check out the video when it's ready. But uh, yeah, I use a USB-C driver for that because I play wired usually. And I'll still keep my Quest 2, but I'll use that wirelessly through the, the air, not the AirLink. Um, what is it called? The, uh, it's a plug and play thing for the Quest 2. Uh, hold on one second. I'm just checking over everything. Make sure I have everything that I want. You can also select minimum, by the way, and just solely just have the display driver. But for me, I just hit recommended and I select the USB-C driver. And that is that for now. Go into next and it will unpack the installer. The next step is optional, has more components, which you may or may not want to install. You don't have to, they're not necessary. Come on, hurry up. Here we go. All right. Uh, but I suggest you follow along. Um, I've tried this already and I haven't had any haven't had any issues. In fact, I got a slight increase in performance in terms of FPS from for my games. So uh, what I suggest is to disable the installer telemetry and advertising. That's the most important one. I, I yeah, it's basically, uh, it's Microsoft doing what Microsoft does and they're kind of just spying on you, you know? So why you get sent all these advertisements and stuff like that, they keep track of your spending habits, I think. And uh, that's not cool. Uh, what else? Enable the DLSS indicator. I tried that in my last gaming video. You'll see in the lower bottom left-hand corner of the game, you'll see some weird indicator. And I couldn't figure out what that was. I thought it was part of the game, but it's not. Uh, basically, with certain GPUs, if you have a 4000 series GPU and you're running DLSS, this will indicate that it's on. I don't like it. It, you know, I like immersion in my games. I don't need to know if I'm running it or not. So, uh, but yeah, it's like I said, that's solely up to you. You can choose to have that if you want. But for me, I don't want it. So and that's it. Disable multiplane overlay. I don't exactly know what that is. I'm not going to lie. But as I stated previously, if, you know, I suggest you check out a content creator by the name of Pangino and he explains everything in a thorough manner. So if you're confused about that, then yeah, I'll provide a link and you can show the expert tweaks, which I do down here and make sure you disable the driver telemetry. Let's see what else. Um, I'm looking at my list here. 
this is for me is very important. Disable the NVIDIA HD audio device sleep timer. I couldn't figure out, I think what this was doing before by default, it was activated and my headphones, especially the wireless earbuds after a certain amount of, uh, after a certain amount of time, it would just stop working. And I think what's happening is it's some kind of timer on the USB devices and it shuts off. So ever since I installed this, I haven't had any issues as of yet. So if you want, if you're using wireless earbuds or anything like that, uh, connected via USB, I suggest you disable that. And what else there is some, there's HDCP. I don't exactly know what that is. You can look this up. Um, yeah, I'm not going to lie. I don't really know what this is. Pangino can probably, if you want to message him, uh, I would ask him, or you can do a Google search and I'm sure there's a plethora of information you can find on what exactly this is. I think this has to do with copyright stuff or something, or maybe, uh, when you're watching stuff on like Netflix, it has something to maybe, uh, anti cheat. I don't, okay. You know what? I don't know. I don't know. I'm just rambling right now. So sorry about that, but he suggested to disable it. So I'm going to take his word for it. Um, I had it disabled before and I didn't seem, seem to have any problems. And what else there is, uh, apply NVENC video encoding session limit patch. Yeah, that's really about it. I don't think you really need anything else. Um, he suggested to use, to click these boxes, or at least I saw that's what he did in his video. But I don't know. Um, I think, no, this is what the anti-cheat is. Okay. Rebuild digital signature. Use method compatible with easy anti-cheat triggers a driver on a side warning. All right. Okay. Yeah. If you have this checked, when you try to install the driver, it will say something where it's, uh, a warning, a red warning, which is not good Well. In this case, it doesn't really matter. You just kind of just accept it. But uh, what this box does to automatically accept the driver unassigned, it just automatically accepts it and it goes away. So I, I suggest you check these two boxes. And yeah, this one, the start external application for the NVENC video encoding session has something to do with the GPUs video encoding. I don't know. Like I said, just check out his page and he, he gives a, a, uh, in-depth description. All right. That's really about it. I mean, I can't think of anything else. Uh, the only difference is I, I got rid of the DLSS uh, notification window. All right. With that, done you basically don't hit install you put show in folder and what he suggested to do was create a new folder which i'll do right now and make you can name it whatever i'm just gonna name it uh gpu driver select highlight everything inside this window control a click and drag it into your newly created folder and then you can close this out and that is it for that and basically what you've done is you created a tailor-made gpu driver for yourself 
minus all the fluff and all that other crap that you don't want installed, uh, notably the telemetry advertising stuff. So supposedly, theoretically, uh, using utilizing this method, not only will you have a clean reinstall of your GPU driver drivers, but uh, your uh, it should improve performance uh, at least minimally. So in my case, I I have no complaints really because I you know more FPS the better. All right, that is it. For that, now what you want to do is you want to install the DDU display driver uninstaller. Right click the EXE, run as admin. And it's self extracting. You can extract it. That was quick. And it's right here DDU. Now, what you want to do is what I thought you had to do was run the uninstaller automatically. You don't do that yet. You have to run this after you boot into safe mode and in order for you to do that is you have to click right down here you have to click on the windows hit that power button and while holding down shift you press restart and your pc should restart in safe mode or it well it will give you the option to restart safe mode. So I can't do that right now because I am recording. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the recording and I'm going to have to record from my like iPhone or something. And it looks kind of hacky, but you know, what can I do? Right. I, I can't record on OBS uh, because uh, I have to restart the PC. So, all right, with that said, I shall be right back and I will show you, I'll continue on with the tutorial. All right, here's the next step. Last but not least, you click onto the start right here in the bottom left hand corner. And while holding down shift, you click on to restart. And you should get a blue screen like this sorry i'm like holding a gimbal and recording with an with an iphone because um you can't record i can't use obs like i said earlier with uh with what i'm doing right now because uh, it requires the the pc to restart so i'm gonna try my best because i'm using one hand but if you can see right here you just hover over to troubleshoot advanced options it's the first time i'm using a gimbal this gimbal by the way it's a uh, part of the D, what is it? DGI? No, DJI, I'm sorry. DJI Osmosis, I think it's called, or OM. Uh, it's the fourth iteration of it. So I'll leave a link <laughs> of this product in the video description if anybody wants to check out it on Amazon. Uh, I have an Amazon affiliate link with it. So just want to put it out there because it's uh, it works pretty well. It's very smooth, but all right, here goes. Sorry about that. Just go to advanced options and you click on to startup settings and then you click over here. You'll see it says restart. And if you notice, it says restarting in the uh, safe mode. This option is enabled and you basically that's what you want. Enable safe, enable safe mode. And I usually just go into it without the uh, internet access. Doesn't really matter. But anyways, just you hit start and then it's just a matter of waiting now all right here it is now you'll see the startup settings and make sure you just press number four or if you want safe mode with networking enabled hit number five i'm gonna go and click onto number four All right, so this is it. This is what my screen looks like. The GPU driver is not installed. Or the display driver is not installed and it's basically back to its factory settings, which is using the integrated graphics and I'm still using one hand. So it's, it's a little hard for me to navigate, but 
What you want to do now is look for, if I could find it, is the DDU display driver. Ah, oh, here it is. Right here. All right. Um, double click the display uninstaller. And it says the first time, which is not my first time, but it thinks it is because I'm doing a fresh, clean install. And what you want to do is you have to select GPU and go down the list. I go down, I start with AMD. You don't have to do this, but I do it just to be thorough. I click on AMD and uninstall clean and do not restart. Wait for a while and if any of those uh, components are on the driver, it will remove it. All right. Next, you're going to want to select Intel. Same thing. Hit clean and do not restart. And when it's done, you skip on to um, NVIDIA. Click on no when it's finished. Final step, go to NVIDIA. Clean and do not restart. All right, and that is it. You click yes to exit. And for the final step, you want to go to the folder where you put all the uh, the GPU driver and the GPU driver and all of its selected or pre-selected components are. Double click setup or right click and click on to run as admin. All right, do the usual steps, agree and continue. And you got two choices. You can click, you can click or select express recommended or custom advanced. Normally I would select the custom advanced, but since um, in the previous step that you, uh, you selected everything that you wanted, uh, you don't really need to just hit the express recommended. Click on the next, and now it's just a matter of waiting. It takes a little while. You just have to be patient. All right, and that is it. You now have to just restart your PC, and you should have your screen back to normal. All right, I shall see you in the final step. All right, and here is the final part of the tutorial. Last but not least, make sure you install the NVIDIA control panel. You can also find it in the Windows Store, but for me, it's easier just to right click and install it. And you'll be greeted with this window. So over here, these are my settings. So settings may vary. It depends on a person's PC and their setup and their uh, preferences. But for me, I just go into manage 3D settings and I leave mostly everything at its default values, except for anisotropic filtering. I leave it or increase it to 16 times. It's, I hear it's very low, uh, resource intensive, so it doesn't really cost much to have it. So why not have it just max? completely max it out. That's what I do. FXA, I just leave it off. I, I mostly let my 
games and uh, programs, I'll I'll do it on a per basis scenario. Gamma correction, I just leave that on. Anti aliasing mode, I I just leave it on. It's default or the gamma correction. Uh, anti aliasing mode, I leave it on. Application controlled. Uh, let's see what else. The only thing I change, another thing I change rather, is the background application max frame rate. It's not your max frame rate of your monitor. It's just the background processes. So I tend to leave that at its lowest, which is 20 FPS. So that should free up some resources if you're playing any graphically intensive games. And that's it. Maybe low latency mode. I'll put that on, on either on or ultra. Um, power management mode. I always prefer maximum performance. Some people say that you don't need to. It does it automatically, but I don't know. I've, I've been doing certain things for so long. It's just, it's like, it's kind of like a habit. The cache size, they say you should leave it maybe like 10 gigs or it depends how much headroom you have. Um, I have a lot of space, storage space, but on my C drive, I have, I don't know, maybe about four to 500 left in terms of gigabytes, but I always have a habit of putting out unlimited, which is probably stupid, but I always do it anyways. Play a lot of like graphically intense games like, you know, Skyrim and Fallout 4, you know, VR and all that shit. So a lot of these games, they download shader cache to make the game run more efficiently, things of that nature. So it's recommended to have it at least on to maybe at least 10 gigs. But like I said, I put on limited and I haven't had any problems. But if you're low on uh, space or anything like that, then, you know, lower it accordingly. And this one is subjective in terms of texture filtering, texture filtering quality. If you have a very low spec PC, I suggest you put in high performance, but I have a 4090, so I like the best visuals. So I put it on high quality. Although if I run into any issues with performance, I will switch it back to the high performance. When I had my 1080 Ti, I always had it at high performance. That's how I was able to run a lot of the games um, at 4K. Um, maybe not always getting 60, but... I was at least able to play games at 4K and get like 40 frames per second with FSR and, and you know, Fidelity FX, of course. But 4K gaming on a 1080 Ti, I think it's pretty awesome. Yeah, that's really about it. Uh, the V-Sync, I leave it as default. I just let the 3D application, I left that decide and I do, I change it on a per game basis. Uh, triple buffering, you know what, let me, I'll turn that on. All right, and yeah, that's it. The VR pre-rendered frames, I don't really know how that works so i just don't touch it uh with this particular gpu i'll leave it adaptive um there with vr there's something called variable rate super sampling and it's supposed to make things clear where you're looking but outside of the periphery of your view it's supposed to lower the resolution so only what you look at gets rendered at full resolution so that basically grants or provides your gpu with more headroom and more resources and improves frame rate so I keep that at adaptive and I tried on, on, I didn't really see a difference, but I just leave it at adaptive and that is it. You click apply and there we go. I always go down to also change resolution and I use Nvidia color settings. I used to use the, instead of RGB, I used to use YCBCR422 because I had problems playing Resident Evil 3 in VR with Prey Dogs VR mod for some reason. It made the uh, the graphics look really weird, and it just it looked off. It wasn't even playable in VR. So I found that out through a forum that just changing the output color format. But I haven't played that game in ages. I don't really see a need for it. I do prefer RGB because it makes the colors more vibrant, and the blacks blacker, and the colors more colorful, and the bright colors brighter. So I yeah, I rather have the RGB and apply. Click yes, but like I said, it's a matter of taste and it's subjective. This is an important one for me is the digital vibrance because everything looks washed out on 50%. So I usually go up to about either 70% or even 75 is good. I don't have multiple displays. Uh, the color settings, I use Nvidia settings and I switch the dynamic range down to full. And yeah, everything else, I just click on it Nvidia.
adjust video image settings, NVIDIA, click apply. So yeah, that's pretty much my monthly ritual or whenever, you know, new drivers come up, I always go through all these same uh, parameters and I change the settings. And that pretty much is it. If you want to stick around, I will also go into what I do with um, another ritual that I utilize with system and maintenance. You don't have to do this, but it's a good habit to get into. And I will copy and paste all these instructions in the video description. But what I do is I uh, erase a lot of stuff that I don't need, like old program files and things like that. So what you want to do is you just go into your local disk C. Here's the first part of what I do. And you go into Windows, software distribution, download, and whatever is in there, I just get rid of. So control A, highlight all of it, right click and delete. All right, so next step, I go down into the Windows bar and I type in run R U N. Click enter and I type in temp. And whatever is in a temp, control A, right click, delete. If you see this window says that it can't be completed, the action can't be completed because the file's open in, oh, in this case, I have Vorpix installed. I don't know why Vorpix is on, but you just hit try again. If it still doesn't work, then I click onto the box. It says do this for all current items and I just skip it. Next step is, no, not the prefetch. It's right here. Same deal. Type in run, enter, and click onto, oh, I'm just gonna, I'm too lazy to type it out. So I'm just gonna copy it, paste it into the, the bar. Plus I don't, it's awkward right now because my microphone's in front of me and I don't want to reach around to use my keyboard. All right, right click, paste the percent, temp percent, click onto it and right click and get rid of everything in there. And that is it. Next step is go to run and type in the prefetch. And you might get a warning. It says you don't currently have permission to access this folder, which is ridiculous because for me, I'm the only one that uses a computer. But Windows wants to be Windows and I have no choice but to deal with it. So I highlight everything in the prefetch and it looks like a lot, but it's really not. It's only like a couple of kilobytes per file. And I right click control A, highlight everything and delete. Same deal. Do this for all current items and skip. Type in run and type in W-S-R-E-S-E-T for Windows Store Reset and it should reset everything. Or the Windows. Windows Store in case you're running into any issues. Uh, and there's an app installer on Microsoft. Of course, update all and let it do its thing. And also I like to clear out my cache for Windows Chrome the browser data go into the settings and privacy and security clear browsing history but make sure you don't check the passwords and other sign-in data or yeah you're gonna have to retype those passwords so for me i'm a lazy bastard i don't want to type in passwords all the time but everything else i have selected to clear and that is it uh okay CMD, go to the command prompt, type in CMD, run as admin, and you want to type in the IP config forward slash flush DNS. I forgot what that does. I think it has to do with your internet. I don't know. Look it up. So I'm not good at explaining it. I don't know all the technical details and parameters and all that shit. So IP config forward slash flush and then capital D. NS and enter and it successfully flushed the DNS resolver cache. Close that out. Go into your files and click onto view. Go into options and clear your file explorer history. Because God forbid, if you have a wife or girlfriend and she is computer savvy and checks what kind of files you've been checking out in folders and you're uh, downloading some <clears throat> wankable material. You're going to be in trouble. <laughs>
Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I said it. All right. Uh, what else? Local app data. Run. Enter. I'm too lazy to type it out. So I'm going to highlight it. Copy. Right click. Local app data. Enter. And uh, go into the NVIDIA. Or find the NVIDIA folder. This is a pretty important one, by the way. Okay. DX cache. Highlight, right click, get rid of everything. All right, skip if it doesn't let you. And go back and find the folder that says GL cache. I don't have it, so I don't have to worry about it. But if you do, if you find a GL cache folder, highlight everything and delete it. And yeah, that's really about it. Two more steps and we are done. Go into your disk cleanup and you will see if you haven't done this for a while, you're going to free up a lot of space. I remember the first time I did it, I freed up like at least 20 to 30 gigs, but I do it consistently. So I don't, I'm not going to free up a lot, but it will get rid of old files that may clog up your system and mess up your registry. So this is, this is a good practice to get into clean system files and yeah, that's it. Wait for it to do its thing. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of 1.76 gigabytes, hit OK again, and delete files. While that is waiting, I'm going to check for any disk errors. And this is a common one that everyone seems to do. Go into the command, command prompt, run as admin, and type in SFC space forward slash scan now, and it should should test your local C drive for any kind of uh, errors, registry errors, things of that nature. So this should take a while. Depends on your computer. So I might as well do that while it's cleaning up my C drive. And I'm going to, you know what, I'm just going to pause it and I'll be back when it's done. All right. And there we have it. It is finished. And the Windows resource protection did not find any integrity violations. So when this is done, you can just close the command prompt window out and that is it. I really can't think of anything else you really need. Um, yeah, if I think of anything else, I will make another video, I guess. All right. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it was helpful. And as always, if you do find my tutorials helpful, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment section. If you have any suggestions, leave it in the comment section. And if you have any personal requests about what kind of videos you'd like to see, also leave it in the comment section. No shit. All right, with that said, I am out of here. I hope you enjoyed the video, like I said, and uh, I'll see y'all the next video. All right, take care and good night. Have a, have a great one. No. Oh, damn. It's morning. Good morning. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.